These helicopters are manufactured by Rosferto, a Russian state-owned company that is providing them to Venezuela. If the people of Venezuela ask for more helicopters, we shall give them to them. According to a Russian news agency, a Russian-sponsored helicopter pilot training center was unveiled in Venezuela last week. Moscow has also sent about 100 military personnel it says are there only to service air defense systems sold to Venezuela. This is a big power kind of a confrontation now when you look at the Russians moving in in defiance of U.S. warnings. And quite frankly, the Chinese, I understand, are, are digging in now when before they were giving some thought to, you know, leaving Maduro on his own. Last week, a Chinese plane landed in Caracas with 65 tons of medicine and supplies for Maduro's government. Looking at Venezuela, Venezuela right now is a big fat mess. So uh, I'll be talking about a lot of, to a lot of people, perhaps President Putin, uh, perhaps President Xi of China. President Trump has called on Russia to get out of Venezuela, warning that all options are on the table. Russia and China insist their support for the Venezuelan leader is in accordance with Venezuelan and international law. But U.S. officials are warning Moscow with the threat of additional sanctions. It's, it would be a mistake. Uh, for the Russians to think they have a free hand here. They don't. Russia and China have loaned Venezuela billions of dollars and are concerned about getting back their money. But for Moscow, it's more than a financial calculation. It's also a geopolitical move to increase its sphere of influence. In 2015, the Kremlin intervened in the Syrian civil war, turning the tide in favor of President Bashar al-Assad. Analysts are concerned Russia may try to do the same in Venezuela. Because the Russians are testing us, uh, we proceeded with a policy uh, where there was not a credible threat of the use of military force, and the Russians are calling our bluff. Some experts say one way to avoid Venezuela turning into a proxy conflict is for Juan Guaido, who has declared himself interim president, to convince Russia and China that if they stop supporting Maduro, their investments will not be completely lost. Both the Russians and the Chinese are going to want to be quite cautious in their approach to Venezuela and are going to want to, as much as possible, keep good relations with both um, sides in the Venezuela dispute with the hope that eventually whoever's in power will make good on their debts. Meanwhile, Venezuelans are suffering food, water and electricity shortages as the crisis deepens. Patsy Widakuswara, VOA News at the White House.